I think we're going to get started here. Thank you all for joining us for our session today. Session is taking marketing to the next level with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. My name is Jamie Fiorda. I'm a director on the worldwide product marketing uh, team for Dynamics CRM. And presenting with me today is Kishan Chetan, who is the program manager who heads up the product strategy and development of Microsoft Dynamics Marketing. Um, we're going to take you through uh, a, a session that's different than yesterday, but you will see some stuff that you saw yesterday, frankly. Um, I'm just curious, before we get started, how many people were in yesterday's session, Introduction to uh, Microsoft Dynamics Marketing? OK. So we, we have, it's probably half, maybe just over half. So some of you, welcome. Uh, you haven't been through uh, the, the, the intro training yet. This, this session is different, as I said. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, the place I like to start when I talk to people about Microsoft in context of marketing solutions is, is you know, what is Microsoft's vision? Not just Dynamics vision, not just for the Dynamics marketing product, but what is Microsoft as a company? And what, what are we doing? Well, our, our vision is to enable marketers of all types to create amazing customer experiences across all channels, not just the digital ones, where you hear a lot of noise today, and for good reason, but we span traditional and digital through world-class insights, which is very important to every marketer in the world to prove that their investments are having impact. And we do it through team productivity, which is unique to Microsoft because of our heritage and the assets that many of you as our customers have already in place. One of the customers that is my absolute favorite is Build-A-Bear retail stores. And their story is unique because they wanted to reinvent the retail experience for their customers. And if you're not familiar with Build-A-Bear, they have a kind of a process flow to how their retail experience works. They, um, they have uh, stations that lead a customer through the buying process. A child typically starts by looking at flimsy, empty teddy bears, and they select one that they like. And they go to the next station, and it's a fluff matic station, and they interact with the station, get it filled, and they go to the next station, which is typically a heart. And they kiss the heart, and they put it in. And then they take a sound uh, machine of some sort that they can select the sound. But in order to select the sound, they have to interact with technology that's there. It's a touch screen um, display, and it allows them to either pick an existing sound or make one of their own sounds. So they get their sound in the sound box, they put it in their teddy bear, they go and get it stitched up, they go to the fluff o matic fluff out their teddy bear, they go to the, the birth certificate station, which again is technology driven, touch screen, punch in the information, they go to the next station, buy accessories of all kinds, and then they go check out with their, with their bear in hand, birth certificate in hand. And overall, it's a pretty cool experience. And I'm sure many of you have children that have gone through this, you've probably been through it yourself. So we helped them design that customer experience. And, and frankly, it was pretty amazing when they first came out with that. But Build-A-Bear is a company that always wants to innovate, always wants to take their customer experiences to the next level. And what they did is they asked Microsoft to help envision what would a new experience look like that extended beyond the store. How could they take that in-store magic and take it, uh, take it to the home? And we started collaborating with them around the Xbox, the Kinect, terminal, or the, the accessory that's connected to the Xbox, and a game that is pretty popular with our younger audiences called Connectimals. And what we did was we created special bears that were Kinect enabled. And after a child purchased one of these bears, they'd hold them up in front of the Kinect sensor, and the bear would be recognized and associated with their profile, and it would pick up their name, and it, that child would then be able to play fetch with it, pet it, interact with it in a way that they could, couldn't really interact with their tangible, you know, pretty dormant teddy bear. Very cute, but not interactive. So they took this experience to the next level. And it was very, very interesting for them because they were able to drive uh, additional sales of this through really what came down to kind of a, a viral social campaign through very small children. So there's a lot more information on this that, uh, that we have available through case studies and whatnot. If you're so interested, the, the URLs are there. I encourage you to read it. It's, it's, it's fascinating. But in terms of companies that are thinking outside of the box 
and trying to figure out different ways to drive sales and drive their business through the customer experience, Build-A-Bear falls strongly into that camp. So the reason I bring that example up is because we all have an opportunity to create amazing customer experiences. Obviously, that's a retail experience. It may not apply exactly to your business. But the world is changing. And the way people are interacting is fundamentally changing. The new channels with mobile and social are fundamentally changing, creating new possibilities. And let's go through some of those and what's happening. So everyone is connected now. There's 4.5 billion people on social sites. There's more than 6.8 mobile devices in the world. Um, and there's rampant communication happening across these devices and people. In fact, smartphone usage is up so high that people are checking their phones on average 150 times per day. That's an that's a, a insanely large number. And it's not that they're just checking Facebook and tweeting valueless information. The information that they're communicating with one another actually has a high degree of value. What they're doing is they're communicating in, uh, insights about the products they've used, and therefore your prospects have access to that information. They can see what competitors' products are, you know, what they're all about. They can see what their customers have to say. They can hear and see what the service experiences of other people they trust are like. They can see, um, see what employees of your company are potentially posting and uh, putting out in the social sphere. And they're making judgments and hypotheses about your brand and your product without you ever engaging. In fact, on average, organizations in the B2B world are seeing that the, the sales cycle is getting delayed before a, a, an individual actually engages with their companies up until they're about 57% on average through the sales cycle. So there's something happening to push that first engagement out further and, and, and cause the company essentially to work from a disadvantage with that particular prospect. A lot of times, and this is what marketers worry about, they're not even in the consideration uh, for, that, for that particular customer. So there's, there's things that we can do about that. And we'll, we'll be talking about those as we go. Brian Velmeer, who's an analyst that we work with frequently, uh, commented uh, just a few weeks ago when we were giving him a briefing on the products that are coming and convergence and everything else. He said, uh, he said the, cu the, the customer experience is the last bastion for, uh, for competitive advantage. And that's, you think about that, it's a pretty strong statement. There's not too many things that companies can compete on because, switching, because barriers to entry into a lot of markets are lowering, and it's just a lot easier for customers to see other comp competitive solutions and make those selections at, at a click. So customer experience becomes much, much, much more important as a competitive differentiator. This study, this is just one simple stat that kind of summarizes a very big study that was conducted by, it was kind of a combination between Forrester and Watermark Consulting. And the idea behind it was Forrester did analysis to understand, well, what are the 500, you know, how would we stack rank all the companies on the S&P 500 if we didn't look at revenue or market vet cap or, you know, all the traditional metrics, but instead we looked at their degree of investment in the customer experience. So you can imagine it totally flipped around that list of 500. What Watermark Consulting did then is took the top 10 to the bottom 10, and they took an average, and they said, okay, well, how did the top 10 perform against the S&P over 2007 to 2011, and how did the bottom 10 perform? And the results were pretty dramatic. The, the companies that were identified as investing the most in the customer experience performed, they outperformed the market, and this is during a pretty serious economic downturn. The ones that didn't invest in the customer experience actually suffered uh, quite handily, as you can see on this chart. So there is value to looking at your business through a different lens, and that's one of the reasons why, not only with marketing, but uh, across Microsoft, we're encouraging our, our customers to take a new look at 
How are you delivering your customer experiences? So all this technology and all these mega trends and you know, these concepts of big data and uh, social and mobile and the Internet of Things, all these things that you hear a lot about in the media today, these are not, uh, they, they don't have to be challenges that are hard to deal with. These can be looked at on as opportunities, opportunities for you to capitalize on. And that's something that, um, that, that we're encouraging all of our customers to do as they look at how they might be able to leverage these things to do business differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a scenario. It's a fictitious scenario, and I'm sure you'll be able to figure that out pretty quickly. But it's a scenario that was created for uh, our presence at the, the CES show in January. And the idea was we we're trying to communicate how different life could be in the near future. And in some ways, a lot of the, what I'm going to show you is already possible today. But as we go through this exercise, we'll wrap it up and we'll look at it and, and think, you know, with, with the new possibilities that exist through these uh, mega trends, what is it that your business might be able to do differently? So this is Jim. He's, a, he's basically going to be an attendee at CES. He's sitting with his cup of coffee. He has his tablet computer in hand. And on his tablet computer, he has uh, what's called an, uh, an intelligent agent. In this case, it's a, it's a travel agent. And the travel agent is um, it's basically connected to his social profile, his preferences, and uh, information that allows the system to see other information that are relevant to his interests. So as he engages with his intelligent agent, he basically says, well, I need to book a trip and look for hotels in, in Las Vegas. He clicks view, and what it does is it pulls up the available hotels, but it also overlays his colleagues' information. So now you can see on there, there's 12 colleagues that are staying at the Wynn, there's seven that have already booked at the MGM Grand, and so on. He says, okay, the MGM, or the Wynn is, is uh, I'm interested in staying there, so it pops up, and he gets more information about that. He could drill down based on his network. His, uh, his network has decided to share their personal details on their travel so that everybody across their team can understand uh, when they're coming, when they're going, and he understands who's staying and when they're coming. So he books his hotel, he books his travel, and while he's in flight, he gets delayed. So while he's delayed, um, his wife tries to call, but his, he set his settings with Skype such that it would send an automatic message to her, and actually sent two messages to her saying, his flight's been delayed, would you like him to call back? She indicates yes. So what Skype does, it basically sends her some messages when he lands, and then it prompts him to say, when you get to your hotel, would you like a call back? Okay, so this is all hypothetical, right? So let me pause. Hypothetical, super hypothetical. But at the same time, it's not outside the realm of possibility. There's already some apps that kind of do some of this kind of stuff. So what we're trying to do here is just kind of step back from it and say, huh, wh what if we were able to look at our customer experiences and our selling processes and our awareness and, and credibility generating uh, activities and, and apply some of these things to what we do? So let's continue. Restart and go through. OK, so the callback is set. Skype is connected to his calendar. He goes out to baggage, and he realizes that the taxi line is 36 minutes long, which is not uncommon at CES. It's a massive show. Everybody lands at the same time, and it's just a, a, a zoo. So his intelligent agent says, hey, your colleague, Peter, is actually nearby. He's at baggage carousel 10, and he's renting a car. So would you like to text him and hitch a ride? Automatically sends him a message. Peter shows up outside of baggage carousel 10. They are off to their hotel. Saves himself a ton of time and, and frustration. So on the way to the hotel, he gets within range of the hotel, and, <clears throat> and a note pops up from the wind saying, hey, I understand you're about 10 minutes away. We have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to upgrade to a better room with points, cash, or you could just keep, in, keep your own room. So he says, well, I'm going to upgrade my $50 per night, and a digital key gets sent to his, to his phone. Goes to his room, holds it in front of his, his doorknob, door unlocks, and he walks in. Not only does the door unlock, 
But because all this is based upon his personal data and information that he's willing to share and preferences, it knows who he is. So I know, this is the sales pitchy part, right? So there's an Xbox One in the room, believe it or not. And what do you know? It pops up and says, welcome, Jim. You know, so it not only recognizes that it's Jim, but it upholds all of his personal preferences in terms of movies and music and everything else to create this very personal custom user experience or customer experience for Jim. So he's now looking at his computer. Skype says, hey, you need to call your wife back. So they're talking, and uh, he notices that, that um, uh, Will I Am is at the win. So he's pulling it up. She's talking to him. He's not really paying attention. He's <laughs> pushes her to the side, he looks at you know, this thing, ask the talent, and he's like, oh, I'm going to ask Will I Am a question. So she's trying to tell him that actually Will I Am is coming to their town, and they love Will I Am. So he's excited that he's there, but he's not paying attention to her. He completely misses that he's coming in town on Valentine's Day, and so he misses that part. So he goes into the office the next morning, and this is where it turns into a little bit more of a business conversation. His computer senses that he's at the meeting room. He... Uh, he opens up his computer. It senses that people, participants that are supposed to be at the meeting are checking into the meeting. It says when they arrived. It pulls up social profiles and creates kind of an aggregate of interesting stuff about the people in the room. What's most interesting about them right now based on Twitter, or Facebook, or other social information they may have provided? What do you have in common with the individual? And provides an easy way for him to make a new connection with that individual, all without having to do a whole lot of clicking around and punching in URLs and all that other stuff. So he gets down to the meeting, huge success, clicks a button, his presentation goes off in PDF file format to customers, PowerPoint format to his colleagues, and he's done with that step. So he heads back to his room, he starts looking for his, his dinner reservations. But while he's there, he still wants to talk to Will I Am. And he realizes, oh my gosh, he's coming to my town on Valentine's Day, and my wife is not going to believe this. So he goes and books the reservations, and the seats, gets those, and he goes to dinner. So he, he's at dinner, and he gets a, a text message saying, hey, Gregory is in town. This is your friend. She's in your network, and he's only a mile away. And what do you know? The House of Blues is directly in between. And because he's allowed his preferences to be shared with a uh, couponing type service, it automatically pops up with a drinks offer that it's a two for one drinks offer. House of Blues is directly in between, and they go off, they meet, they have this great you know, reconnection, and all is good in the life of Jim and, and his wife and his colleagues. So again, total example. But the idea is there are new possibilities, and we're not far off from a lot of these. And that's why I like to show this example. What we try to do is we try to encourage our customers to stop and just think about what can be done differently because really um, business as usual isn't business as usual anymore. There's new data points, there's new ways to look at the data, there's new ways to find correlations in the data, to understand what drives customer behavior, and a lot of it's moving digital. And if we're not looking at those digital channels in different ways and taking a look at it with a, kind of a, a marketing statistician sort of lens in a way, we're going to be uh, missing out on, on opportunities. And frankly, competi your competitors will be looking that way, and hopefully not before you do. So how do you get to the next level? So this, the title is Getting to the Next Level. And from here, I like to step back, because we just jumped you know, 50 years forward, or maybe five years forward, and, you know, and just step back into reality. For the marketers in the room, you know that your brand is everything. You want to drive the, the most important or the, the best brand experience for your customers. And it should be pretty easy, but, but it's really not. Um, on one hand, it is easy. We can say what the, what the brand experience is that we want, what the brand promise is, but delivering on that is actually hard because it's really dictated by the customer experience that your customers have and also the people that are forming opinions based upon um, based upon what they see from their networks. So what that means is that your ability to drive a good, a, not just a good, but a great customer experience has a huge influence over uh, the consideration process. Now, if these things match, you have uh, a great 
a great potential to drive word of mouth marketing. And once that happens, your marketing budget, your, actually the, the, the returns on your marketing budget far exceed that, that, dollar, that actual dollar amount. When these things are not aligned, that's when your marketing is a lot less efficient. And this is when you have to spend a lot more money in order to, in order to um, you know, drive the desired pipeline or returns that you're looking for. So why is it so hard? It's hard because the marketing automation space is hugely fragmented. And the technologies that marketers use, you know, the key lieutenants around the CMO, are, you know, they're, they're, they're disparate systems. They have their own databases, they have their own user experiences. And these, these well-meaning people, these marketers, have to construct a customer experience out of really this kind of spaghetti mess, these piece part, this piece part architecture that sits on the back end. And the result is that the customer experience is fragmented, the user experience is fragmented for the marketers, and also, and perhaps you know, most uh, important, whoop, sorry about that, most important for the CMOs in the room or the marketing leaders or anybody that needs to justify the money that they're spending on marketing, it, all these systems have their own way to calculate returns and impact. And trying to pull all that information together from all these disparate systems is extremely difficult. So, and time consuming and, and whatnot. So, you know, the challenges for different indi individuals vary based upon their role. For brand and advertising professionals, these are individuals that tend to work a lot with agencies and outside vendors. They, uh, they, they, they're building content and video and web-based video content as that becomes more and more important. The file sizes that are transferred between groups and teams and you know, inside and outside the, the marketing organization are huge. It's not uncommon for our customers to say, you know, we have a 20 gig file that we need to you know, share with a partner or a vendor or an agency or 50 gig or more because of the quality requirements that they have. These advertising and branding pros are very concerned about, um, about the branding compliance and the legal compliance, especially at, for multinational companies that are working you know, across different borders and there's different requirements in different geographies. Uh, they also have a very challenging time understanding how to make their traditional advertising, which may be you know, magazine and billboard and television and other print, match the experience they're trying to drive digitally. So, you know, it's one thing to go make a plan and just push all that stuff out, but it's, entire, some, it's an entirely different story when you're trying to say, did I need to spend all that money on that magazine ad? Would I have gotten the same returns without it? You know, how do you make sense out of all that? That's, the, that's their challenge, and, you know, and that really goes to the last point, managing ROI across all these different uh, types of um, publishers that they're working with, whether they're digital or traditional. So for demand generation-focused marketing leaders, there's different challenges, but the, the source of the pain is really the same. It's what we described. But what they're concerned about is landing the right message at the right time, driving, you know, it, it says driving nurture campaigns at scale, but what that means is really automating the next step. It's relatively easy to say, hey, here's a campaign. Let me push this out to uh, my customers. It's a whole different story to say, oh, 50 of them responded, and then 150 of them didn't respond, and I want to treat them differently. And then, you know, then there's a different split off of that, and you know, there's different segments that you want to treat differently. And that's where it gets to be a lot more manual, time consuming, and challenging. And frankly, it's, it's the inefficiency of the time that restricts a marketer from getting as specific and personalized as they'd like uh, more than anything. Um, keeping diverse teams on brand. So you have your email marketing system, you have your email marketing experts. Okay, I need to help with this email marketing campaign. Okay, you guys go. Got my social team, it handles the social community. You guys go. And there's a lot of manual work to kind of keep the assets and everything else in line. Um, managing customer preferences is uh, obviously a huge concern, something that, that we at Microsoft take extremely seriously for spam managing list fatigue and, uh, and customer preferences. And then just like we talked about with the advertising uh, uh, and brand pro, tracking ROI by campaign and investment is, is critical. So CMOs, huge complexity. The changing world is really disrupting
the world as they know it. You know, it starts with, you know, CMOs feeling increasingly unprepared. So from 2011 to 2012, uh, the number of CEOs actually that felt prepared for the changing world dropped. And I haven't found a more recent chart, but, um, but I think it's safe to say that it's a trend that uh, most marketers that I talk to, at least, are, are, uh, agree with. Why are they feeling underprepared? Well, the top three reasons are because they don't know what to do with all the data. They're not making good use out of it. They don't know how to leverage social ch media channels the right way in a way that impacts their business. And the growth of devices and, and other ways to communicate they haven't really explored yet, they don't really know how to make those channels work. So they're, they're, there's a lot of uncertainty in that regard. At the same time, they realize that the number one reason that, or the number one thing that they'll get evaluated by is return on investment. So now you got all this uncertainty, increasing uncertainty, and increasing pressure to prove that you're a master of driving return in this uncertain world. And it's just confirmed with the IBM studies, the Accenture studies, that CMOs are finding it hard to calculate ROI. Accenture, based on their research, believes it's because uh, that the biggest challenges are multi-channel attribution correlating advertising to sales, which is you know, a multi-channel sort of a problem that we talked about, and measuring media buying effectiveness because so much money is still spent in offline channels. So that's a little bit about what's happening with all the groups. So, so what's going on? Well, if we had to sum it up, you know, there's a, the fragmented marketing plan, the incomplete channel engagement, the silos of advertising, the inability to measure what's actually going on, the chasm that exists traditionally between the sales organization and the marketing organization, we haven't talked about that a whole lot, but I think um, everybody, for the marketers in the room and the sales folks in the room, I think you uh, all understand that one pretty firsthand. And then the inability to innovate on customer experience. So the, the ability to innovate is completely curtailed by you know, addressing all these other issues kind of manually. And of course, when you're focused on solving these kinds of problems, you're really not focusing on the customer experience and moving the ball forward. And unfortunately, you know, you kind of fall or you're, for, you're being pushed more closely toward the, the customer experience laggards, which is not where any one of us want to be. So what's the solution? At Microsoft, we believe the solution is putting the customer at the center of everything. And it's a great place to start. We think that the customer promise needs to be the, there needs to be a plan and a strategy around that. And it needs to be at the center of all the marketers, all the channels, all the programs, and every step of the customer journey. And uh, when that happens, and everybody's in line, and there's shared resources, and there's an understanding of marketing spend across the organization, and what the effect of the marketing investment is, then there's an ability to measure ROI. And there's an ability for people to move more efficiently and, uh, and think more about innovation rather than manual processes. So, few quick recommendations that we have for, uh, for brand and advertising professionals. Um, you know, take, take a step back. Think about and find out, do some research, find out where your customer base lives and what channels they're engaging in and spend more time focusing there. Also, spend more time driving digital experiences and not just driving a digital experience. This is, in context of advertising, advertising needs to push more people to landing pages and to other areas, applications and other things, where data can be captured. Because the amazing thing about having all that data is that when you have it in the right people's hands and you have the right tools to measure, you find correlations between the outcome you want and the behaviors that take place. So driving that advertising uh, to a digital channel, especially the traditional advertising, is a very important thing to do. Um, centralize the planning and assets and budgets. We talked a lot about that already. And then measure the advertising impact of the, through the sales cycle, which is a hard thing to do today. But with the right tools, uh, it's definitely possible. So de demand generation uh, professionals, the, the key is you know, it's, it's, it's centralizing all these uh, disparate individuals with their different systems around one plan. And this is something you could do with any technology, but it is important to make sure that everybody's on the same page and there's a streamlined way for everybody to behave 
in, in accordance to what the strategy is. Um, engage customers with targeted content. So content strategies, you've probably heard about. We have a session tomorrow on it about content marketing. It's a hot buzzword. It's a strategy designed to specifically target those individuals that are making hypotheses or forming hypotheses about the vendors they want to talk to without uh, engaging with those individuals. So they're, they're, they make judgment based upon how much content, how, what your point of view is, what your recommendations are out in the market. And you need to have a way to engage with customers on that level before you ever get to the point of making a, a sales pitch or anything along those lines. Integration with the CRM system is really critical to pass leads. And if you're going to be passing leads, it just makes a whole lot of sense to automate the lead scoring and management of those leads so you don't have an individual or people involved in that process slowing down what, uh, you know, the leads as they get passed through. And lastly, of course, we always want measure. So that's a, that's a huge thing. So for CMOs, it's, it's an even, you take it up another level. Step back further from, you know, the day-to-day -day operations and really create that vision and get your teams on board with that vision uh, to create that amazing customer experience. In order to do that, CMOs need to create the right organizational structure. There's, it's, it, it's one thing to think that technology can help. It's, it's another to think that it'll solve all problems. It obviously doesn't. You all know that. But it's really important that there's somebody in place that can help understand what is the, the vision for the customer experience. What's the strategy? And how do we uh, ensure that everybody is performing their function to drive that vision that we have? Aligning tightly with sales leadership is critical, and with the right tools in place, it makes the conversation a lot easier because it becomes uh, it becomes a, a it, it becomes a tangible discussion around metrics as opposed to a conceptual discussion that uh, that that is unactionable. And then creating a culture around measurement and impact. And the idea here is that if it's not part of the culture then the investments probably are not going to be made to support that culture, and the behaviors are not going to be driven to, uh, to, to, to you know, prove marketing investments and the impact of those marketing investments. So ultimately, uh, the, the culture aspect is absolutely huge. So with that, I do want to show you a quick video of one of our customers, the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour, Tour is professional golf at its highest level. And when the opportunity arose for us to work closely with such a well-respected organization, we jumped at the chance. The combination of young players and veteran players performing on huge stages for us week in and week out and the competitive friction that exists household names on the one hand and young players who are becoming household names very quickly on the other hand. I'm not sure that we've ever had a more exciting time at the PGA Tour than we have right now. We play over 100 tournaments a year around the world across all three tours, the PGA Tour, the Champions Tour, and the Web.com Tour. We're in over 225 countries and territories and we pass through 945 million households and our telecasts are broadcast 23 different languages. Microsoft Dynamics marketing software is the perfect tool for a company like the PGA Tour whose marketing efforts extend across multiple media with a variety of content and with many high-end sponsors. The brand marketing team at the PGA Tour has a lot of responsibilities within our organization. It starts with strategic marketing for us and it leads all the way through to the development of our advertising campaigns. We track over 500 individual pieces of creative annually across all our campaigns. And those pieces extend across all media types, really, which is millions of dollars in media value for our partners. Today, there's so many ways to reach our target audience. With media being splintered, there's so many different ways to consume advertising and promotions. We knew we needed one system to house all of our media assets. And what we liked about Microsoft yeah, Dynamics Marketing was we could take the, the creative Get side, the media side, and the trafficking side and house them all under one roof. Microsoft Dynamics Marketing functionality really made us more efficient. And we can share detailed reports with our partners like FedEx, Schwab, Web.com. It's really helped us not worry about the data so much, but 
uh, think about the strategies that allow us to focus on the right things. In the past, we'd assemble the values from TV, assemble them from print and digital, and sum it up in a report with overall media value for a part and say, you know, this is how we're promoting your property. Now, with Microsoft Dynamics Marketing, we can get pretty granular. I mean, we can track the amount of exposure an individual player gets, and that's a benefit to his sponsors. Our partners have certainly noticed a difference. We're becoming more transparent as it's become more important for our partners to see the value of our promotion. Dynamics Marketing has helped us be way more efficient than we ever have been and allowed us to show our partners how much value we really have in our brand marketing department. A tool like Dynamics Marketing we see as something that's, that's really flexible for us, so we're pretty excited about the future. Okay, so one of our more no notable customers, most people don't know they're a nonprofit. They have about 26 people in their, in their uh, branded communications group. And as you heard, it's massive scale worldwide. And there's only one way that they could do that, and that's by, by being super efficient with the limited resources and individuals that they have driving that, um, driving that process. So in terms of impact, um, and really this is what it's all about, there's great results that come from scaling your marketing team, 25% higher return on, on programs. In putting social into the customer engagement process means 60% uh, better conversion rates per a study by uh, Mech Labs. Consistent multi-channel advertising provides stronger brand, higher response, and increased revenue. Providing immersive customer experiences, kind of like what Build-A-Bear has done or what Pizza Hut has done by building applications within the Xbox. Drive, uh, drive measurable returns. For, for Pizza Hut, it was a million dollars in a four-month window. Um, you know, there's higher conversion on sales leads, and of course, you know, we're heavily focused on helping our customers provide those actionable marketing insights through analytics. And to help me tell you a little bit more about that, I'm gonna have Keyshawn come up to the stage and go through Microsoft Dynamics Marketing. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, so what I was hoping to do, and I, I think quite half of you actually attended yesterday's session, so you've actually seen what the product capabilities are and what the details are. So I was hoping to just give a brief introduction of Dynamics Marketing and then get into a product and actually show you a little bit of the product so that you can actually see how you can actually support the end-to-end -end process with the product. So this is kind of our vision of uh, the, the Dynamics Marketing vision. So we don't, I think Jamie was uh, saying earlier about how complexity essentially destroys marketing or how complexity destroys makes it really hard to do the end-to-end -end marketing. And our goal is essentially to really simplify it. So if you actually look at our end-to-end -end vision, we really want to enable marketeers to essentially be able to manage their resources, essentially manage all of their processes, make themselves ready for essentially being able to run really good campaigns and have the great customer experience that we were referring to. So we really care about the resource management. And afterwards, we really want to enable customers to engage with partner, uh, with their customers across multiple channels using our multi-channel engagement, whether it's engagement in email, whether it's bringing them back to landing pages, whether it's actually running traditional campaigns and managing you know, print ads, managing television ads. Uh, so the real multi-channel, not just multi-channel in digital or not just multi-channel in traditional, we really want to enable truly multi-channel. And then marketing is really all about analytics because it's really about knowing your customer. It's really about knowing how well things have worked for you, which tactics have worked, which channels have worked. So we really have a lot of performance optimization and uh, resource performance management that we've built into a product. So that's how we see the product in terms of being able to enable the whole end-to-end -end process. And we know that in order for us to do that, we need to enable marketers to build good content. I mean, there was a, a comment earlier about content marketing. So the ability to build out your content, whether it's content for your emails, whether it's content for your landing pages or actually websites, or build out and manage content for traditional ads, your print ads, looking at how your print ads look like, is a copyright. So think the whole end-to-end -end process of managing your content is something that we really w look at. And the other side is, now that you've done your content, now that you have your projects in place, how do we actually, and now that you've generated your demand, how do we then go and work with CRM? How do we work with sales to make sure that the sales can close out on the leads that you've generated? How do you work with the service teams to ensure that the customers you've got are supported? And in fact, any feedback that we get from service is actually then factored back again 
into subsequent campaigns. So that integration to the rest of CRM is something very critical for us. And you'll actually see that when I talk to the demos as well, that how important that is for us to essentially enable marketing not to be just a silo. No silos is very important, but integrate with the rest of the product. You've seen a lot, I think, of information about the Springwave. Perhaps by this time, you've seen at least six to eight presentations about Springwave and what's it about. So from our perspective, from Dynamics Marketing, the Springwave actually represents a huge change in terms of the capabilities that we're bringing to market. And essentially, our vision of enabling no silos, removing the complexity, and making it really easy to manage your end-to-end -end process. So we've enabled a real, the ability to really do end-to-end -end process with the, with the Springwave. We continue to invest in our core capability that we acquired with the Marketing Pilot platform, the core capabilities in terms of being able to manage your, your marketing more efficiently. So we, we still focus on that, and I'll actually show a little bit of that today. And how we build on that further with better user interface, making it easy for people to use it. Then we focus a lot of our effort on predominantly enabling, enabling demand generation and demand management people to do the end-to-end -end process, all the way from bringing in leads, bringing in contact from an external system via automated process, via leads, or then running long-standing nurture campaigns that we are actually essentially nurturing people through different channels, or whether it's communicating them to them through email across multiple channels, whether it's transactional email, where you know, somebody takes an order and you want to send them out an email, or it's actually real bulk email that you send out and get feedback back from them. And then we've also enabled the given that now we're actually starting to get into a space of communicating with them, how do we enable things like permission-enabled marketing, the ability to have people double opt-in, single opt-in, et cetera? And for us, the key value proposition that we see is given that we have a, a, a CRM system with a lot of capabilities that we're building into a CRM system, enabling really easy sales use, both ac across the mobile devices as well as the traditional browser devices to actually enable managing your opportunities, closing out your opportunities as well as then looking at the service enhancements that we've made to essentially manage the service process. How can we really build out this integration to CRM? So that's the other uh, enhancement that we've made, really in easy to actually integrate to a CRM system, and you can actually see that a little bit in the demo. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing which we, where we've really invested a lot is at making ourselves a cloud-based platform that is available in 35 markets and 10 languages. For us, that's very important because a lot of our customers tend to be multinational. Take PGA Tour as an example. They're actually, you know, they're tours all over the world. They're actually tournaments running all over. That's very important for us. So the ability to be available in all of the three geographies and available in 35 markets was very important for us and to be able to do that at scale. So that, in a summary, are the key kind of enhancements that we did with the Spring Wave for Dynamics Marketing. Let me essentially walk you through the product itself a little bit so that you can actually see the end-to-end. Uh, so this is the Dynamics Marketing homepage, and uh, I, what I wanted to first focus on and give you a sense of was the breadth of the capability that's supported by Dynamics Marketing. If you actually look at the product itself, you can start all the way with managing, as I said, MRM is one of the key heritages, managing your projects. Essentially, what are the jobs that I need to do in order to f fill out my campaigns? What are the project requests, all of the approvals, et cetera? So essentially, managing my end-to-end -end process with it, of essentially doing what is necessary to run my campaigns is a key part of what is we support with the tool. So let's essentially go through a scenario where we're going in and we're essentially creating a brochure or a, that you'll actually send out through email or send out through a, a, a nurture campaign. See how you can actually create this brochure working with different people in the organization, whether it's other people in the marketing team or other vendors. Create the brochure, then see how the nurture campaign generates leads then actually look into the details of how we actually go ahead and score those leads, and then see how we set up the sco lead scoring model. And I also spoke about the CRM integration, so you'll have a sense of what CRM integration, how we actually set up the CRM integration, how easy it is. Then I wanted to leave you with a little bit of analytics so that if you look at the whole demand generation process all the way from the creating the collateral to then nurturing the leads, scoring the leads, and then seeing how effective it is. So let's actually start walking through with the project. 
So I have a couple of different projects that I've set up here that I actually want to create. So I want to create a brochure that is needed for, as a part of our demand generation project. So here I have a diff bunch of different jobs that you can actually set up as a part of your campaign. So let me go ahead and me as a marketing manager, I can actually start to look at, in order for me to actually be ready for this campaign, to create this white paper that people will go to my website and download, what are all the things that I need to do? I know that I need to find the, finalize the content of the white paper. I know I need to finalize the agency that I'm actually going to marketing through, who actually will create this white paper. I have to finalize the brochures that actually are going to get sent out, finalize the review. So I have a bunch of things that I need to do, and I can actually start to track through very quickly where I am. For example, I can actually start to visualize that some, something here is red. That means I'm behind the mark. And one of the key things that Jamie was pointing out earlier was for creative and advertising to look at their project management schedule and manage all of their assets and content in one place. And this really helps with that, managing how well they're doing and tracking how well they're doing. Now I can actually go in and look at one of the assets. So let me actually go into one of the assets. And here within the tool, you can actually have multiple assets that are associated, that are created and associated with the product. And you can have various versions of this particular asset. And me as a marketing manager, I can actually go in and start to look at the asset, for example, that an agency has created for me and start to edit it or annotate it. So for example, I can actually review every single page of this asset. I can actually start to say, you know what? This is, we need to have the new logo here, right? So what this enables is this process enables ensuring the first part of the process, because before you can actually run a campaign, you need to have all of the marketing content in there. This process ensures that you can actually go through and have the right content with the right branding, with the right ability to actually share it with the rest of the team. So now once we have this content ready, I can actually go, start to go uh, and go through an approval process. So for example, I can actually ask request for an approval. I can have different types of approval templates that I can actually use. I can check who actually needs to approve, whether multiple people need to approve or not. But essentially, I can actually walk through a workflow of managing the approvals. Now, once I have an asset that I really have in place, let, I can run a campaign where I'm actually directing people to my landing pages and trying to actually get them to uh, you know, uh, generate, lead, generate leads from the campaign. So let me actually go into one of the campaigns that we created uh, here for uh, Dynamics, essentially to run uh, for the general session yesterday. So if I actually logged into this campaign, you can see that this is our, uh, the campaign designer. I suspect you've seen this a lot in different sessions. But I just wanted to bring it here where you can essentially bring people to different landing pages. You can actually have, for example, check which people visited which landing pages and track all the metrics. This is like a Windows live tile where constantly you're essentially seeing how many people got, the, got an email, how many of them essentially opened it, and how many actually registered to a landing page. So now with this process, not only are, if you start from the start, you're not only creating the assets and managing them, but you're also communicating, sending it out to the consumers. Now that you've sent out this information, you can actually, within the same application, see the leads that you've generated from this campaign. So I can easily go in here. I can actually see who are the leads that I've generated. So let me actually see the various leads that have been generated. And then I can actually start to drill into one of the leads if I need to. So I can actually drill into a lead, and I can see who this lead is, what are the scoring. I can go ahead and rescore a lead. And what I can do here all in one place is not only uh, I can see how this lead has been scored and what actually costs this lead to be a valuable lead. So for example, if I went into this lead, I can see across time what are the different operations or the actions that this lead has done which actually made this lead a valuable lead. I mean, what are the different types? Did they visit my web pages? Did they visit, go to my landing pages? Did they actually take the collateral that I actually gave them? So this helps me go through the end-to-end -end and actually look at how effective the lead is and why this lead is a valuable lead. So now, how, where did I actually set this up? So now if I went back to my campaign, I can actually go navigate into this lead. And this is how I set up the, the lead scoring rules, very simply. Uh, you can work with your sales teams, set up very complex lead scoring models simply in one application so that you can actually have this collaboration between sales and marketing. So for example, I can go in here, I can see, you know what, I want to set up a rule that every time somebody comes in and 
submits in a landing page, we'll actually score them based on that. And then we can actually de devalue their uh, you know, score if the submission has been in the past. So this essentially lets us create complex lead scoring models. It could be based on landing page submissions. It could be based on websites. So different ways of essentially starting to score leads, both on behavior as well as demographics. So now, this what I've shown you right now is just enables a, a demand manager to set up not only create camp assets, but also bring customers back to their websites, generate demand, and actually score them as well. The next part of what I wanted to show is how easy it is now from here to actually set up an integration back again to your Salesforce system. So it's as simple as going back into the product and going into your settings and going and looking at going and looking at uh, let me actually now get there. Yeah. So what I'm trying to show here is it's all it's just in one place you can actually set up very simply your integration to your CRM system. You can actually say, hey, this is how I, the CRM I connect to. I, I can actually go in just in one simple place, check even, you can even check what your mapping is, what, how exactly, what is the information that you're actually transferring between your CRM systems and your marketing systems all in one place. So now what you've done very simply is you've gone through the end-to-end -end process of essentially setting up your CRM system, connecting to the CRM system, generating the leads and scoring the leads. Now the last, of course, is once we've generated the leads, you want to do actually more analysis on the leads. You want to see which leads worked well, which leads did not work well, and what's working well with the leads. So we have a bunch of analytics as well that we've delivered out of the box. So let me actually go into one of them that you can see right now. So what I have here is uh, looking at the score, looking at a lead holistically all the way from the start of the life cycle to the end of the life cycle. So if you actually look at this picture, what we're saying is we're, we're starting with this prospect uh, about in the early part of January. Then we essentially sent out an email to them that they read. And then they actually registered, brought them back to a landing page that they registered. And essentially, we did a set of things that nurtured them and made them a real prospect. And at some point of time, we decided that they were ready for sales to actually start taking a look at them. And then converting that lead back into an opportunity. And back, eventually, there's a phone call which happens in CRM. One of the salespeople calls them. There's perhaps a couple of demos. And you eventually close the deal. So this ability to have one single view across your marketing life cycle, your CRM life cycle, so that you understand what actually works well, what really lets you convert a prospect into a lead and then eventually into an opportunity. Same way you can actually look at perhaps somebody, another lead, who we went through the whole cycle but eventually lost so that you start to have some sense of what happened for winning, what happened for losing, what tactics work well, and what tactics don't work well. So that's the another part of the analytics that a demand generation person can actually look at. Now the second set, the other analytics that you can also look at is more of a holistic view, which is as a, as a marketing manager or as a brand manager, what are the different areas that I could look at? So for example, can I actually start to look at what are all the different campaigns that I have running? How, how much days are left? What are all the projects that I need to run in order to actually finish my campaign? How am I doing in terms of my budget per campaign? How many leads have I generated? What's the return on investment? And all of this information is information that you have in Dynamics Marketing and CRM that we are essentially putting together to give this holistic view to the marketing manager. So now you can easily see how ready you are and how well your campaigns are working. You can actually go and start to piece together your opportunity pipeline. You can actually see by each campaign where are they generating, uh, what stages are the leads that they've generated in, what scores do the leads have, and how many of them have you actually won. So you kind of start to piece together a picture of how effective each campaign is. And now you can start to drill down on each one. For example, if you wanted to drill down only on the US campaigns or only on the Canadian campaigns, you can just easily do that in one place and go back and get away from there. So the key here is that this lets you do analytics and look at your full picture across campaigns, across all of your budgets, all in one place. So you can go into the details, look at a single lead, what's been effective. Then you can go back up and look at the aggregate picture, 
And the reason why you can do all of that, and the key message is you can do all of this in one system because we enable you to manage the end-to-end -end process in one place. You don't have to stitch together different systems. You don't have to bring all of this data into one BI system, try to do all of these custom reports. The key value proposition is we have all of this in one place, so that enables you to essentially do all of this in one place. So I'll hand it over to Jamie uh, to walk through. I think there were a few questions from yesterday around pricing and how do we sell the product, what's the pricing structure of the product. So I wanted to hand it over to Jamie to essentially walk through that as well. All right. So I'm just going to add on a little bit. OK, five minutes. We're almost there. Um, just to add on a little bit, you, you can imagine how exciting this is once we start allowing you to pull in data from Microsoft Social Listening. And you get to see, oh, well, what was the social response now? in correlation to when campaigns launched and was there a correlation at all or was it massive you know is this something i want to do more of and then you, you because of the focus of uh pulling in o data compliant sources of data you could pull in external sources and find these correlations that are going to help you as marketers find these amazing insights into what works and what doesn't so the possibilities we're at the very front end of what's going to be possible, but a lot of the technology is already going to be in your hands here very soon. So in terms of pricing, um, I think a lot of you are familiar with the existing pricing structure for the CRM Online uh, solution. It's you know, primarily uh, sales focused, but now it includes this, the social listening and analysis capabilities, and it's still for the same price, $65 per user per month. Um, it does have some level of customer service capability, and, um, and it has what we call sales campaigns, which is the traditional marketing functionality that was always with Dynamic CRM and CRM Online. But um, what gets exciting, and this, this conference is particularly exciting because we just shared with you over the course of the last two days, uh, you know, amazing amounts of new innovation that's going to be available between the Paratrue acquisition, between Microsoft Dynamics Marketing, between all the capability that's coming in customer service and dynamic CRM online itself. And what we're doing is we're providing a new, a new SKU. And that SKU is called the Enterprise SKU. And basically, it's a bundle of all that capability, Microsoft Social Listening, everything for $200 per user per month. So if you're already a heavy Microsoft Dynamics CRM user and you could see how this would benefit your organization, it's a, it's a bundle price that's much, it's much better than buying these things as individual pieces. Um, for customers that are looking at Microsoft Dynamics CRM, or I'm sorry, Microsoft Dynamics Marketing as a standalone entity, you don't have CRM today, and it's it's not your number one concern. Um, we ha we do sell that as an individual uh, service, and that is for $125 per user per month. And there are some details with that, and some of them are more you know they're they're more interesting for the IT department versus the marketer, but. There's one in particular that's very interesting and important for the marketer to know, and that is how much it costs for uh, email scale. And that point is at the bottom of the blue bar, and it's basically you get 50,000 e email messages per month, batch or transactional, but you can purchase uh, bunches or batches of 10,000 at $50 a piece. And if you're already using another uh, you know, email marketing system, you should take a look and see if this is competitive with what you have. Um, so we, we strongly encourage you to just take a look. So with that, that's a high level of our pricing overview. Um, I know that all of our, you know, our salespeople on the front lines would love to talk to you more about not only the product and the vision and everything else, but you know, whether, whether this is a fit for your organization. Um, tomorrow we have a ton of other sessions that are both uh, kind of thought leadership oriented as well as interactive discussion oriented. And there's one technical deep dive that's a 90 minute session tomorrow morning from 9 to 10.30. So if you have interest in getting into the product on a much deeper technical level, that's the session for you. And then you know, just look at your convergence application and, and booklet um, from there. And then I think this may be the second to last slide. We have a marketing event taking place on March 12th. So the URL is up here. Uh, I've actually tweeted it out if, just a few minutes ago. If you look at pound convert CONV14 on the Twitter feed, you'll find this URL. And you can, you can join us. We'd love to take you through this if you want to introduce other people in your organization to the solution. 
um, this would be a great time to do that. And then lastly, as always, um, you know, come on out and you know, evaluate the session, tell others, and you know, do all those things that we, we'd love you to do. So with that, thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to take uh, one minute in questions. Otherwise, feel free to come on up.